guys, it's me, Natto Soup, uh, or Becca Hilburn. I don't normally do videos for this blog, but it's easier for me to do a video to show you guys what I'm talking about than it is for me to take a bunch of pictures and write it. So um, today I'm going to be washing a bunch of Royal Langnickel brushes I got at Walmart for the Walmart art supply review I'm working on. And um, other than um, a substitution of the, my preferred brush cleaning soap, I um, it's going to be pretty much the same technique. So what you want if you don't have um, designated brush soap is you want to use a mild shampoo that doesn't contain any additives. Baby shampoo is ideal. I don't have any of that here, so I'm going to use um, the, <laughs> the best thing I can find that doesn't have any additional oils. You can also use um, a conditioner to condition the bristles after you've washed them, but you want to make sure you wash that out. Um, the reason you want to wash your brushes after you buy them is that brushes have um, a glue in them to protect the bristles, and you want to get that out before you start painting because it's going to ruin anything you paint. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to have on hand is a towel to dry them in, or um, I, I usually have a cup and I leave them standing upright in the cup to air dry. Um, okay, so I am going to get started. I'm going to get quiet for a while because there's going to be running water and you probably won't be able to hear me very well. And I'm going to collect my materials. Okay, so the best shampoo I could find for this task is my own shampoo, which is like a tea tree mint shampoo. But seriously, you just want like a very basic baby shampoo for this kind of thing or designated brush soap, which you can get at any art supply store, but um, that kind of defeats the purpose of the whole, I'm going to be working with materials I can get from Walmart. So um, you want to work with cold water, not hot, because hot will remove um, the glue that holds the, the, the bristles into the br uh, ferrule. Um, so cold water. So you want to um, work the brush in your fingers until it's pliable and you've gotten most of the, the, uh, the glue out and just um, put a very little, like um, a pea, sorry for bumping the thing, a pea size amount that you, um, you work into the bristles and then you're going to want to rinse it out really, really good. You don't want to leave any of the glue in the bristles. And um, sometimes you will end up with a better brush than you thought you bought. I bought a bunch of um, sable brushes from Utrecht years ago and I thought they were terrible. Um, and the reason was I hadn't properly removed the glue. I thought I'd properly removed the glue, but I hadn't and I hadn't conditioned them. And conditioning them made a really, really big difference. So now you want to, uh, after you've uh, scrubbed out all of the glue, you want to go ahead and rinse them out. And, um, while this Royal Lang Langnickel, Langnickel brush is not by any means the most perfect brush I've ever encountered, it is actually a lot better than I thought it would be, but it still needs some cleaning because it looks like there's still some glue. So um, after you've washed your brush, 
you, there's two things you can do. You can condition your brush using a regular hair conditioner, um, or you can dry your brushes. I'm going to go ahead and condition all of these brushes. If I can find a conditioner. I actually, the only reason I keep conditioner at my own home is uh, for hair, for uh, painting brushes. I don't like having conditioner in my hair. It makes my hair really greasy. TMI. Um, and this is also not my house. This is my mom's house. I'm visiting her for MeccaCon. Um, so thank you, Mom, for letting me use your lovely bathroom. And thank you, Devin, my younger brother, for letting me use your camcorder. Ha ha. Oh, she's going to be mad. She thought this was shampoo. It's not. It's conditioner. Lomp lomp. But it serves my purposes really, really well. I can condition brushes. And um, with conditioner... You don't really want to coat the brush, I and mean, this is honestly like way too much conditioner. Um, you just kind of want to like, you know, delicately get it into the bristles, um, and you don't have to wash it out right away. Um, you can you can leave it for a few minutes, and this is actually enough conditioner to condition all of those brushes. So I'm gonna find a place to set it aside because I don't want to waste it. It's not my conditioner. Um, and I'm going to wash the brushes and then I will condition them all. So. I apologize if the videography on this is terrible. Um, there's a reason I don't normally record myself um, doing reviews or tutorials. Um, when you're doing it by yourself, sometimes it's hard to see what see what you're doing, even if your camcorder screen will rotate for you. Okay, so all of my brushes now have conditioner on them, and I have a nice clean towel right here and you want to let, I mean if you're going to let them dry uh, with conditioner in them or even if you're going to let them dry sans conditioner totally clean you want to lay them thusly on um, a clean towel uh, I hope you don't have cats or dogs or any animal that's going to come try to eat them my cat Bowie will try to eat them he likes the taste of hair <laughs> he's a little weird um, so yeah and you let them dry fully and then you can put them away or use them, whatever. Now you've got clean brushes. Hey guys, good morning. So I let the brushes dry overnight with the conditioner in them. And um, you guys can't really see this, but they're fairly stiff. So if you're looking for a way to um, protect your brushes during travel, this might be um, a good option for you. Anyway, I'm going to rinse, rinse the, um, the conditioner out and dry them off and then continue with the review. So, as you can see, I'm working at a bathtub again. I've got a clean, dry towel, and um, usually I would do this at a sink, but it's not really conducive for filming. I've got my brushes, so let's go ahead and rinse out that conditioner. You want to, again, work with cold water. If your water comes out hot at first, but it becomes cold later, I would let it run for a little while. Uh, hot water will dissolve the glue in the ferrules, and then your bristles will come loose. 
So you just want to work the conditioner out of your bristles using your fingers very gently, not pulling too hard. You don't want to pull the brushes out um, until the greasy feeling is gone, and you want to do that while rinsing with clean water. And for those of you who are familiar with quality brushes, I know this seems like a huge waste of time. Um, I'm just doing this to make sure the review is as objective as possible. I'm treating these brushes the way I would treat higher quality brushes. Um, so you would also want to reform your bristles using your fingertips and let them dry. Uh, these are not very good brushes. Um, you might be able to see how um, how damaged the hair kind of looks. Um, that's fine for a mop, which is what this is. Um, it's not really good for any other brushes. And you'll note that I'm shaking the excess water out. When you're uh, purchasing brushes, if you're in a store, you want to see your brush come to a tip. This one is actually okay. Um, it's come to a decent tip. And that's part of the reason why we spend the time conditioning them is um, so that the fibers are um, uh, repaired enough to be able to do that. And you don't want to leave any conditioner in your brush before you start painting because it's going to ruin your paints and uh, ruin your ability to paint. And another package said um, these are fine for acrylic or oil. Uh, the bristles themselves are a little bit soft being squirrel, maybe squirrel, and uh, camel hair. So if you want acrylic brushes, I would recommend finding something made out of um, like a hog bristle. And you want to dry the excess water around your ferrule because it can cause rust, especially with cheap brushes like this. Um, they would degrade very quickly. And last one. And um, now you can either paint with your brushes or you can let them dry out and put them away for storage. So, um, this was Becca Hilburn, also known as Natto Soup. Uh, I will be re um, returning to the written portion of this blog post. Have a good day.